One of the questions most essential to human existence is, what does it mean to be human? Why does humanity dominate Earth? To answer these questions, we can't just look at our current surroundings, nor at human culture, nor even at Homo sapiens alone. Rather, we must look much deeper into the past, millions of years into the past, into the years of the Australopithecus afarensis, the pre-Homo ancestors of our species. We must look into the years of Lucy. Lucy is the most complete and oldest skeleton of an Australopithecus afarensis that we have ever found, and she revolutionized the way that we see hominoids and the way that we see ourselves in anthropology. Today, we examine those revolutionary findings. First, we will delve into the who, what, where, when, and why of Lucy's discovery, then how Lucy might have lived, and then we will delve into the subtler scientific breakthroughs Lucy's bones gave us, including the impacts of Lucy's leg bones and the bones found around her. There are a number of different stages that occur in anthropological digs, and Lucy is no exception to this rule. The first step of any dig is finances. Like anything else, the essential question becomes, who's going to pay for it? For Lucy, the answer was IARE, the International Afar Research Expedition, which was founded by three anthropologists, Eve Coppins, Maurice Taib, and Donald Johansson. Once funding was secured, it was time to move on to step two, surveying and ecological reconstruction. Luckily, this was already occurring in some form. By the 1960s, Taib, the geologist who helped fund IARE, had already pretty thoroughly surveyed an area in Ethiopia called the Central Afar Basin, and had found some promising Pliocene fossils. However, he had not surveyed the Katahadar tributary, which dried, and expected to find some interesting stuff there. So, with the help of Johansson and John Kalb, the dig began in Hadar in 1972. Excavation went extremely well. Even within the first season, lower limb remains were found, as well as a temporal bone. By 1974, the first hominin remains were found, including a maxilla with complete adult dentation and several mandibles with teeth still attached. And then the most amazing discovery of all occurred, which blew all of these previous discoveries out of the water. Lucy. The remains of Lucy included a partial skeleton, a mandible, and a fragmentary cranium. She was the most complete Australopithecus afarensis we had ever found. And that wasn't only that she was so complete. By using potassium and argon dating, it was determined that the area in which Lucy was found may be as old as 3.6 million years old. No other hominids had been discovered before 3 million years ago, before Lucy. She was evidence that hominids were walking the Earth over 3 million years ago. IARE continued to dig around Hadar for years and found that the area was littered with hominin fossils. Over 200 specimens would come out of Hadar, but by far the most interesting was Lucy. Lucy, much like the other Australopithecus afarensis, had mainly a plant-based diet. This was determined by looking at the dental anatomy and tooth enamel. Their pearly whites also showed us in the modern day that the Australopithecus afarensis ate more fruits and leaves rather than seeds or other hard plant materials. From Lucy's skeletal structure, we could see that she had a cone-shaped rib cage. This informed us that Lucy and other Australopithecus afarensis had very large bellies, which were adapted to a low-quality, high-bulk diet. Furthermore, there were cut-up animal bones found in Dikika, an area where other Australopithecus afarensis have been found. This is a peculiar find, as it might indicate that there were meats in their diets as well. The reason that this is peculiar is because it looks like something was used to get the flesh off. As we understand this time period, the Australopithecus afarensis only used simple tools like sticks and other immediate objects. Stones may have been used, but that is just a hypothesis, since there has been no findings of stones modified in any way that date back to this time period. It is believed that the deeds were done by Australopithecus afarensis due to no other hominid species dated this far back being found in the surrounding areas. Aside from their diet, it is believed that the Australopithecus afarensis, like Lucy, lived in social groups. This conclusion has been accepted due to what we call today the first family. The first family was a group of nine adults and four children found together in Hadar, Ethiopia. This is the same area that Lucy was found as well. This connection gives us today a minor hint on how Lucy and other Australopithecus afarensis lived during their day-to-day -day lives. The longitudinal arch is a uniquely human structure. This arch adaptation allows for humans to walk long distances. The arch helps store elastic energy, maintain structural rigor of the foot, and is a shock absorber. This arch, supported by the intrinsic muscles in the foot, 
and by the activity of the tibialis posterior, the fibularis longus, and the tibialis anterior. And while all primates have a transverse arch, only humans have a longitudinal arch. Some scientists have suggested that the Australopithecus afarensis did not have a longitudinal arch. They based this on the inclination of the facets of the pedal joints and the presence of the robust navicular tuberosity, which may reflect weight bearing on the medial side of the foot. They found that Lucy's tibial arch angle is structurally identical between the terrestrial mountain gorilla and the arboreal lowland gorilla. This means that Lucy was likely not able to travel long distances due to the lack of the longitudinal arch. She actively climbed trees despite being bipedal, so Lucy was likely to be arboreal and terrestrial, meaning she traveled by land and by trees. Sexual dimorphism is often used to correlate reproductive and social behavior among Australopithecus afarensis. Among the skeletal remains found at the site were two small individuals, AL288-1, also known as Lucy, and AL128-129. Several larger specimens were found that led to the conclusion that Australopithecus afarensis was sexually dimorphic. After examining many skeletal sites, it was determined that the dimorphism among Australopithecus afarensis was very similar to that of modern-day humans. However, this comparison among the different sized skeletons ignores the intermediate sized skeletons and doesn't take into account that Lucy in AL 128 129 could differ in age by tens of thousands of years. The geometric mean method has been used to determine that Australopithecus afarensis was equally, if not more, dimorphic than gorillas today. Speak into the microphone. Hello? This is Vic with Sweet Baby John Ray's Barbecue, and we're doing a segment called Vic on the Lawn. <laughs> if you had to guess what size Lucy's brain was, what animal do you think it would compare to? A chimpanzee, a dog, or a deer? Why, why not just a regular human? That could also be an option. Okay, how about a regular human? False. Oh. Chimpanzee. Oh. Close enough. Yeah, close enough. All right, do you know Lucy the Neanderthal that they found, her skeletal remains? Have you ever? Yeah. All right. Do you know what her genus is? It's not Homo sapiens sapiens. No. It's Australopithecus afarensis. Can you say that? Did you say Australopithecus afarensis? Australopithecus afarensis. It's okay. Oh, man, I'm on TV. <laughs> do you know how she got her name? Do you know how she got her name? Her name's Lucy. Mm-mm. <laughs> the person who found it was named Lucy. No. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, anyone else have a guess? The Beatles song. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, they got it. <laughs> um, do you know who Lucy is? Yeah. The Astro Pithy. Yeah. That one, that one. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, if you had to guess how much she weighed, predicted amount, what would you, what would you say? About like 80 pounds. All right, it's close. 64. How tall would she be? She probably like your height. You think I'm 4'8"? <laughs> I'm 5'2", but she was 3'6". 3'6"? Yes, the size of a modern-day five-year-old. 